From the houses we live in, to the buildings we work at, to all the places in between, we use concrete structures every day. Even when you can't always see it, concrete is a part of every structure built. You may think that concrete is just concrete, but the concrete for this high-rise, this retaining wall, this road, and this storage tank is all very different. Even the concrete for this driveway in Florida is very different from this one in Chicago. How can a material that makes all these structures so similar be so different? The answer starts with the ingredients that go into a concrete mix. In its most basic form, concrete is a mixture of Portland cement, water, and aggregates such as rock and sand. The aggregates serve as the filler material in concrete, while the Portland cement and water form a paste which serves as the glue that holds the aggregates together. Through the chemical reaction called hydration, this paste hardens and binds the aggregates into a strong, durable mass we call concrete. Concrete basically consists of three simple ingredients, and by varying the types and proportions of these ingredients, we get different concrete. Why would concrete need to be different? To meet the unique design and construction needs of a structure. A suitable concrete mix design can be determined, but we have to ask ourselves, what will the concrete be used for? Where will the structure be located? How will the concrete be placed? And when will it be placed? The answers to these questions all affect the final ingredients that go into a concrete mix. Different structures require different concrete mix designs because their uses vary. For this high-rise building, the concrete must support heavy loads. It needs strong concrete. This pavement will be exposed to cold weather and de-icing chemicals. Its concrete must be durable. For this water storage tank, watertight concrete is a must. And for this warehouse floor, the concrete must withstand constant abrasion. How do we meet these different needs when designing a concrete mix? Strong, durable, watertight concrete begins with a key ingredient, water. Water is used in a concrete mix to properly mix and coat all the ingredients for hydration to occur and for the concrete to be workable. The right amount of water in a concrete mix is critical. A concrete mix with insufficient water won't have enough paste. It'll be hard to place and will harden with a rough honeycomb texture. A mix with too much water will be smooth and easy to place, but the hardened concrete may lack strength and durability. Excess water dilutes the strength of the concrete paste, making the hardened concrete weaker, more vulnerable to cracking, and also more permeable to salts and other destructive chemicals. How do we ensure that the concrete has the proper amount of water in it? At a ready-mix concrete plant, cement, water, and aggregates are carefully proportioned to meet the strength and durability requirements of the structure. The stronger, the more impermeable the concrete needs to be, the less water we would start with. To make sure the mix has the proper amount of water, the consistency of the mix is checked before it's placed by performing what's called a slump test. The slump test may show that the mix has the proper consistency, has too much water, or that the mix doesn't have enough water. It may have lost water due to extended transit time or unexpected delays in the placement of the concrete. Some additional water may have to be added prior to placement, but this water must only be added in the ready-mix truck drum and must be uniformly mixed with the proper number of revolutions, according to ASTM C94. Strong, durable, watertight concrete begins with a low water content, but the right amount of water to cement in a mix, the water-cement ratio, largely depends on how the concrete will be placed. 
A mix with a low water content happens to be ideal for this slip formed curb, which is formed by a machine and needs little finishing. But what if we need a low water cement ratio mix that needs to be pumped? Take this multi-story parking garage. The specs require the high strength and durability of a low water cement ratio mix. Construction practices limit the concrete placement to a pump. The stiff mix used for the curbs certainly won't be fluid enough for pumping. Is it possible to have a low water cement ratio mix that's fluid at the same time? Sure, but not by using Portland cement water and aggregates alone. Chemical admixtures give concrete properties it normally wouldn't have. To make a mix more fluid, a water reducer can be added. Water reducers make the concrete flow easier from the pump, through the hose, to this elevated slab in this warehouse without increasing the water content. If a water reducer is not used, pump hoses can become clogged and blocked, delaying the placement of concrete. Water reducers are also used for concrete in areas that are difficult to place, such as around congested reinforcing steel. Are you starting to see how the concrete for this vertical retaining wall and this sidewalk are different? They have different strength requirements and they're also placed quite differently. The water reducer needed for the pumped retaining wall wouldn't be needed for this hand-placed sidewalk. We've seen how a structure's final use and how the concrete will be placed affect our choice of ingredients, but what about when the concrete will be placed? How do weather conditions and seasonal changes affect our mixed design? It's summer now, while the concrete is being placed in these column forms. But suppose construction is delayed until fall or even winter. Can the same concrete mix be used throughout the year? Probably not, without some adjustment to the mix. To get quality concrete in hot or cold weather, other chemical admixtures may be required. To understand why they might be needed, let's talk about how concrete sets and hardens. As concrete dries, the water that doesn't chemically react with the cement slowly rises to the surface. This water is called bleed water and eventually evaporates. In hot weather, water evaporates much faster. When this happens, the surface can dry out and crack. Now you may think we can simply add more water to the mix in hot weather, but adding more water actually increases shrinkage cracks. To slow setting time and minimize cracking in hot weather, a retarding admixture should be added to the mix. In very cold weather, hydration and strength gain may slow or stop completely. To place concrete for this high rise in winter, an accelerating admixture may be needed to speed the concrete's set time and strength gain. Hot or cold air temperature, along with concrete temperature, humidity, and winds all affect how concrete sets and dries. These varying conditions require different mix designs and different chemical admixtures. All too often we think quality concrete means strong concrete. Strong concrete is a must for these core walls and elevator shafts in this multi-story commercial building. But strength alone isn't always the most important property of concrete. Take these driveways in Chicago. Their concrete doesn't need to be as strong as the multi-story building, but they do need something else. Durability against the effects of the environment. Concrete in cold, wet climates undergoes many freeze-thaw cycles during the fall, winter, and spring. What happens during a freeze-thaw cycle? No matter how low the water-cement ratio, concrete is somewhat porous. Water is able to enter the spaces and freeze. When water freezes, it expands. When there is no room for this expansion, stresses develop inside the concrete. The concrete relieves these stresses by cracking. Over many freeze-thaw cycles, these stress cracks appear as surface cracks or scaling. For quality concrete in freeze-thaw areas, an air entraining admixture should be added to the mix. Entrained air provides millions of microscopic bubbles of stress relief when water freezes and expands. 
Air entrainment is what makes this weather-exposed Chicago driveway different from the floors not exposed to the weather in this multi-story building, and even this driveway in Florida, which isn't exposed to the many freeze-thaw cycles. We know that different concrete is needed depending on where it's located, when it will be placed, how it will be placed, and what it's going to be used for. In addition to adjusting the water content, using chemical admixtures and air entrainment, we can further custom design concrete for different applications by using different types of cement. There are five types of Portland cement produced in mills like you see here. These different types of Portland cement can be used to suit various design and construction needs. Almost all uses of concrete can be made with Type 1, a general all-purpose cement suitable for buildings, bridges, floors, pavements, and precast structures. But some concrete structures require special needs. These precast pipes are exposed to sulfates in the ground. A Type 2 cement gives the concrete moderate resistance to sulfate attack. The concrete for this winter placement will set and harden slower. A Type 3 cement can be used to give higher strength concrete at an earlier age than Type 1. Its application is similar to using a Type 1 with a chemical accelerating admixture. The concrete for this dam will generate a tremendous amount of heat during hydration using a Type 1 cement. A Type 4 cement minimizes the heat for these massive structures. This sewage treatment plant is exposed to high concentrations of sulfates. A type 5 cement gives the concrete protection against these sulfates. Different cement types can be blended together for a combination of other needs and are often mixed with mineral admixtures. Mineral admixtures act like cement in the presence of water and they include fly ash, silica fume and ground granulated blast furnace slag. These mineral admixtures generally retard the concrete set time, but increase workability and strength. Fly ash is most often used to reduce the cost of a mix. Silica fume is commonly used to decrease the concrete's permeability. It was used for this parking garage in this northern city that needed protection from the salts carried in by cars. When concrete is more permeable, these salts, along with air and water, Corrode steel reinforcement is shown here on the underside of this parking garage floor. In addition to different types of Portland cements, which may be blended with different mineral admixtures, we can further tailor a concrete mix with our choice of aggregate types from the quarry. Size, shape, proportion, and gradation must also be considered in choosing these aggregates. For this warehouse floor, strong hard aggregates were chosen to add wear resistance. Fine aggregates like sand make pumping and finishing easier for this retaining wall and this third story slab. For this Chicago driveway, soft spongy aggregates were specifically excluded from the mix because they absorb water and cause pop-outs during freeze-thaw cycles. No matter what their use, aggregates must be clean and free of chemicals and particles that could affect hydration and bond of the cement paste. Achieving quality concrete goes beyond simply designing the concrete for a specific structure, location, and use. The concrete must also be properly placed and consolidated, correctly finished and jointed, and adequately cured. Let's examine each of these three processes and their role in quality concrete. Once the mix arrives at the job site, it must be placed as soon as possible. The type of placement will depend on the use of the structure and the construction requirements. Unless the concrete is placed by machine, it needs to be consolidated. Why do we consolidate concrete? During mixing and transporting, concrete entraps large air voids. If these voids are not removed, the concrete will harden with a rough honeycomb texture. Concrete is vibrated to consolidate spaces within the mix and bring air voids to the surface. 
To adequately consolidate the concrete, a vibrator with the correct amplitude must be used at specific intervals. The amount of vibration will depend on how workable or stiff the concrete mix is. Over vibration and attempts to move the concrete horizontally must be avoided and can cause non-uniformity and settlement of the coarse aggregates. Quality concrete also depends on proper finishing. All too often concrete has been properly designed, placed and consolidated only to have its surface damaged by improper finishing. When should concrete be finished? After consolidation, concrete is struck off and bull floated to a level smooth surface. This must be done before water in the mix rises or bleeds to the surface. Once bleed water appears, it's important not to continue final finishing until it has evaporated. The more water in a mix, the more bleed water and longer this waiting time will be. Finishing with bleed water on or near the surface can cause defects like spalling. Adding water during finishing has similar effects and must be avoided. Always remember that excess water dilutes the strength of the paste, making the hardened concrete weaker, more permeable, and often lighter in color. During finishing, the concrete must be properly jointed. Why does concrete need to be jointed? As concrete dries, it loses water and shrinks and also changes temperature. Shrinkage and thermal change cause internal stresses to develop. To relieve these stresses, concrete cracks. We place joints where we anticipate the concrete will crack. A joint is really just a neat control.